Hey everyone! Today on the Plastic Canvas I'm going to show you what comes in Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. Hey everyone, Maddie from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to the first episode in this Tainted Grail series. Today I'm going to lift the lid and show you what comes in the box for Tainted Grail and then for future videos in this series I'm going to be painting the mini. So if you would like to see how the minis get painted, um, make sure you hit the subscribe button. But for today, I'm going to show you what comes with the game to give you an idea of whether this is one that will interest you or not. So let's head down and check out the box art. All right, so here's our box cover. Now I paint miniatures, um, so you know that art is a big part of the game for me, and I absolutely love the box cover for, for Tainted Grail. The artwork is really, really cool. I love the lighting effects that are going on here. Really, really sets the mood for this game. Um, it definitely looks like one that I'm interested in playing. Um, so yeah, so this is really, really cool. Spoiler, I love the artwork through the whole game, but absolutely love this. So let's lift the lid and see what actually comes in the game. All right, so the first thing that we see when we take the lid off the box is our sort of tutorial scenario instructions. So it says, start here. This open and play guide will help you set up and start your first single player adventure in Avalon and teach you all the basic game rules. Built for approximately approximately an hour of play, it does not include any spoilers for the main, ca main campaign. So I think this is a really, really good idea. Um, it shows a good understanding of... Um, you know, the, the level of depth that's within the game. So yeah, having a cool little tutorial, get you used to the different mechanics so that then when you get into the main campaign, you can make the most of it. So I like that. Um, then we've got our rule book. Um, so I haven't looked through this yet, so I don't actually know if it's a good rule book. Um, got all our components there though. Um, looks to be a bit of a, a setup there. Lots of arrows and things pointing to different parts. This I always like because there's lots and lots of different decks and cards in this game. And one thing I really, really hate is when you go to set up a game and it tells you to put the encounter deck somewhere and you've got 14 different decks and none of them are labeled as the encounter deck and you've got to try and work it out. So having these as um, labeled is really, really good. Campaign setup, playing the game, basic rules. All right, so lots and lots of text, but there does look to be enough pictures probably to go along with it. Um, so there's obviously a, a fair bit of reading. Index. All right, so yeah, pretty heavy looking rule book, but, um, but yeah, so there, there we go. Looks good. Um, now we've got what looks to be some letters, and we've got the, the Arav... Ailey, Maggot, and Bior. So these are the character names that you can play as. So whether these are written from Phil. So I'm guessing these are written to the um, to the characters that you play as. So I'm guessing those are spoilerish, and they set up how they've come into the game. So I'll leave them. But that, that looks cool. Nice, nice texture on that. Just just paper, but nice. Um, now these look to be layouts of towns. And they look to be the same. Crow's Nest. Moon Ring, Timberwall. So I'm guessing each player gets one of these, and it's just a way of referencing where you are within the within the landscape. Um, again, nice artwork, paper, but looks nice. So that's that's cool. A save sheet so that when you you don't have to play a whole um, scenario or whatever um, in one sitting. Um, so whether Menhiza, um, food, wealth of each of the players. Oh, and then our statuses that have been unlocked. Um, cool, all right, that's a, that's a really, really nice idea so that you don't have to be able to set aside too much time in one go. Um, put it aside and come back. Our exploration journal. Now, I'm not gonna have a look too much at this because this will be the most spoilery part. Um, but it's, what have we got? What is the exploration journal? So every location in Tainted Grail has a corresponding section in the exploration journal. This will be your primary way of progressing the story of the game. Each exploration journal section is sorted according to location numbers located on the edge of each page of the journal, as well as each location card. If the location card also contains a dream seal or a menhir seal next to its name, its journal will contain these respective sections. They're always last. 
So we'll just have a quick look at the couple of pages just to see what it looks like. Um, so we've got our location, some information about it, and then story elements. Yep, so this is how the story progresses. So not going to look at that at all, but you can see lots and lots of text. Obviously, a lot of time has been spent into um, really creating a deep narrative for this game. Um, so yeah, that looks really, really cool. That, that's really exciting. All right, now into the main sort of components. So we have our character cards. This is Maggot, Ailey, Arav, Bior. Um, and these are really, really good quality, good thickness. Um, and I'll, I always love having recessed boards. So you put your cubes in there, they don't slide around. Food, wealth, reputation, experience, magic, um, abilities there. Our status trackers there, energy, health, and terror. Um, and then different, yeah, different stats around the outside. So they're, they're really, really cool. Really like them. Um, them off to the side. Just get rid of our plastic cover there. All right, so we've got a couple of dice here. Custom dice. So six-sided dice with numbers, but a nice little pattern on there. And then we've got north. Oh, yep, west, south. Yep, so a directional dice. Not sure what the X would be. Anyway, those are nice. Um, just normal sort of dice. Um, now what do we got? We've got some bags. Always good to get get a bag or two. We got oh, so these are the the sliders that go into. If I just bring Maggot's card back in, um, so these which one we'll go? We'll go with that one sort of there in the middle. Um, so that sits into where your current health is, and then these bars coming off to the side there they limit the other stats that you can have. So that's a cool little mechanic there. So as your health goes up and down, your uh, other stats get affected too. Um, so they just slide in. These ones. It's got a grail engraving there. Not sure what's on the grey ones. I don't know what these are for. They look cool. They're an interesting shape. It looks like they whether they fit into something. I don't know. Anyway, plastic tokens there. A um, few of them. Cubes. Two packets of red and a purple. Um, so these will be what go onto your player boards to mark your different stats and things like that. I'm not sure what the purple ones are for, um, but they're a good size, look to be a good quality. So, yep, they, they, they look fine. Uh, oh, more bags, more bags. All right, now into our cards. Now there are a ton of cards um, in this game. I'm not going to open them because I do know at least some of them need to stay in a particular order and I don't want to get them mixed up. So we'll just have a look at maybe the first one for, for each deck. Uh, so here we've got Order of the Day. So this looks like a reference card for each player so that you know what to do during a turn. It's always good to have. I'm not even going to try and say the name of that place. As long as this side of the card is revealed, if you have or gain the You Are Going Insane card, you figure out the mystery of life. Gain one experience, lose all terror, and lose all energy. So I guess these are effect cards that can be revealed throughout the game. How that happens, I have no idea, but I love the artwork on there. Really, really cool. Good size. Sleeving may be an issue if you want to sleeve them. Um, but yeah, that looks really cool. Smaller cards. What have we got? Secret. Now, I don't know if all of these decks are, like, if it's half as one sort of deck, half is another, because that says secret on that side. Um, but then we've got monstrous strength. So in combat, whenever you connect a something key, gain one additional cube. Um, so I guess you can pick up bonuses along the way to influence results of other parts of the game. Cool. Um, then these ones here. Item. Like the artwork there. Looks cool. Um, so a pristine weird stone, weird. Um, so some amount of energy, oh, so pay two energy per player to move the pristine weird stone and all party members from your current location to any connected location. So again, things that you can pick up along the way. Cool. Uh, now what do we got? Oh, that one is a little tricky to get out. Start with that one. Uh, combat. Oh, that's really cool. I like the artwork on there. Um, yeah, so I know basically with combat, so you play these cards, you're trying to line up symbols and they give you bonuses along the way. So in Rage, 
lose one energy gain cube for each hit, maybe. Cool artwork again. But yeah, again, I, I, I haven't, haven't played the game, haven't looked into it. Like, I've seen some videos and that, so I know sort of basically kind of how different parts work, but not enough to know exactly what all of the cards are for. Open and play. Do not shuffle this card pack. All right, so one to leave closed. Um, that looks like an instructional card, maybe. Anyway, looks cool. Nice artwork again. All right, now we can get this one out. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. Oh, weather. Okay, so yeah, there's weather effects throughout the game. This one's good weather, so your first travel today costs one energy less. Experienced journeymen know how to make the most of decent weather while it lasts. So I'm guessing there's good and bad weather effects in there. Chapter 15 setup. So that obviously has nothing to do with the weather. Um, but yep, again, really nice artwork. Looks cool. All right, what have we got? You are going insane. And then more combat cards. So I'm guessing this end of the deck isn't anything to do with this end. Um, but I know in what one of the statuses in your player card is is a terror. Um, and so I'm guessing when your cube goes beyond that that slider um, where it's limited, you're then going to start picking these up, and they'll have negative effects. Um, that looks really cool. Don't know what that guy is. Anyway, nice. Next one. Advancement pool it says combat in the middle there, so listen in silence. Nice. Right. Revealed locations. Play this card on top of the active quest pile, ancient knowledge. Cool, not sure what it is for. I mean, it revealed locations, but exactly how it works, I'm not sure. Um, diplomacy. So this is another element of the game that works similar to combat, where you're playing cards to, to line up the symbols. So gain two charges, pay one charge and draw two cards. It's a commanding tone. No idea what a charge is, but... Whoops. All right, now we've got encounter. Is that what that is too? So two types of encounter decks. All right. Let's have a look at this one. So glade hair. So though it can reach the size of a sheep, it is known for its elusiveness. So I think with these, depending on how much damage you do, is the result that will end up happening. Um, and then temptations. Visions can indulge in many vices, none of them cheap or safe, all of them enticing. So for the reward, lose one terror, failure, lose one reputation, lose two wealth. So I think these are just things like we encounter. They just come up through the game and then you can um, try and complete them if you want to. But again, awesome artwork. These, um, you know, these are look to be a normal card size, so you'll be able to sleeve them, no worries at all. Um, but yeah, so they're all looking really, really good. All right, now we're into certainly the part that I'm most interested in, um, our miniatures. So these are what I will be painting in future videos in this series. So let's start off with this dude. I think this is a, one of the bad guys. Not sure exactly how he works though. Um, but just from a quick look at the miniatures, what I do really, really like is that there's a good level of detail in them that you can do some interesting things, but not so much that it's really overwhelming and daunting. Um, so just little things like how he's holding a lantern here, you'd be able to paint that to look like the lantern is is on and then paint some glow onto his legs. So just little things like that gives you the opportunity to do some cool effects, but they're not like insanely detailed that it's gonna take you, you know, 20 hours to paint each one. But anyway, so there's him. Then we've got our characters that you can play as. Oh, come on. There we go. Um, so I think that one's Maggot. And then Arav, I think that one is. And then Ailey, I think her name might be. And that one's Bior. So again, really, really good amount of detail. Enough there to do some interesting things. But yeah, not so much that, you know, they're going to take forever and you'll never actually get them done. But yeah, really, really cool. I like them a lot. All right. And now we've got our men here. So these are 
figures that as far as I know move around the board um, but you need to keep coming back to them to light them um, and then that helps with surrounding locations I think anyway these are really really imposing out on the table um, really really good size really cool detail in them um, and there is a bit of variation from one to the next so there's one of them then that one there this one's interesting because the the skeleton sort of has its arms crossed there but then there's these weird other arms and legs coming out through there so i'm not sure what's going on there but anyway very cool yeah. And I think this one here is my favourite because it's got this hole sort of in the middle there where you can see the rib cage, but then there's a like a cup or a chalice sort of thing in there um, and it looks like a little bit of a shrine kind of thing. I just thought that was a cool little addition there, wood sticking out, rope, so lots of different textures going on there. So these look really, really cool, all painted up. But all right, so there we go. That's everything in the box. So let's head back up top. All right, so that's everything that comes in the box for Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. I hope that gives you a really, really good idea of what comes with the game and that if this is the sort of game that would interest you. Um, and if you are interested in seeing the miniatures being painted, that's what I'll be doing in the videos for the rest of this series. So please make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you stay up to date with them as they come out. And stop by the Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts that I have set up for this channel so that you can see what I'm doing and what videos are going to be coming out soon. So, with all that being said, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy gaming and happy painting, everyone. Cheers.